Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again. In today's video, a ridiculously entitled homeowner association stole my property and built a parking lot on my inherited vacant lot to make big profits. They refused to return my land to me, so I had to teach them a lesson. Here is what happened. So about five years ago, I fell into ownership of a vacant lot. The story of how I got the property and why I didn't have anything built on it is a very long and boring story involving inheritance and paperwork and other stuff that makes me want to fall asleep. This story is not really about how I got it but more about what happened to it a couple years after that happened. I did not know what I was gonna do with the lot so I was just kinda sitting on it for a couple years. I was 21 and in the navy so my time was pretty much heavily occupied. I figured once I finished my deployment tour, I could decide what I wanted to do. The fantasy in my mind would be to find a girlfriend, fall in love, build a house, etc. All of that stuff seems to happen to people in movies and to your friends, but never to yourself. My deployment lasted for about a year and a half and I wanna say that I was very lucky. I managed to do a lot of good for people and unlike a lot of people in the military didn't come back with a tragic story. I was still in the navy but unless something big came up I probably was not gonna get another deployment in the near future. It was time for me to live my life a little bit and one of those things was to figure out the lot. After a week of enjoying back home and seeing family I drove down to check out the lot and see how overgrown it was. Instead I saw the entire thing covered in concrete that was not there before with two cars parked there. I had zero clue what was going on and called my dad to ask what I should do. He told me to go and talk to who whoever came out of the car and questioned them. There was a couple I saw that parked there and when I explained my confusion and it being my property, they claimed to have purchased a parking pass for the lot. They were very nice and understanding with my questions and because of that I was able to find out that the sale of the passes went through the HOA. Now I knew the next stop and people to talk to and I was not excited about that. The term HOA does not fill me with joy or ease and I also want to make a point that I in no way blame the people parking there. I'm sure they didn't know what the HOA was doing. So when I went to the HOA the first time they took me as a joke and refused to listen when I told them that I owned the property. They just told me that the HOA owned the empty lot and put money into a lot being built and rented for the overall good of the community. Then basically kicked me out without listening to a word I had to say. I had a plan though for the next time I was gonna return to the HOA, I was not gonna show up looking the way I did the first time. It looked just like any other fresh 21 year old when I spoke to them. Going back I decided to wear my uniform and come bearing everything that I needed. Paperwork proving that the lot was left to me. I'll admit it felt good to see that change of face and attitude when I came back. Still did not get the response I expected or wanted though. Me. I came back with the paperwork showing the lot you built the parking lot on was left to me. HOA. The HOA claimed stake over that property due to it being unused. Me. There's no law stating that you can take the land due to me being deployed. Especially without sending legal letters to my address and having a court hearing. HOA, well, the lot is already built. Me, I'm not asking you to return my land to me. I'm demanding that the property be returned to its former state. I wanted to intimidate them but it didn't work and they did not seem to want to back down. I still had another plan and that was to destroy them. I got a lawyer and filed the paperwork to sue the HOA for stealing my property and renting it out as a parking lot for a profit. And my lawyer was good at his job and had the HOA under his thumb. I was suing for the property to be returned to me as well as profits made from the lot to be turned over to me as well. I also wanted the entire HOA board to be forced to step down for improper conduct. There was no way a judge was gonna agree with the HOA that the lot was abandoned because I was out on deployment. You don't want to be on the wrong side of a lawsuit against a member of the military ever. The HOA lawyer went to mine and started begging to drop the lawsuit and they would cut a deal with me. First offering a percentage of the profit but they keep the lot and then giving me some money and shutting it down. The problem with trying to settle is that I knew I would win everything I wanted and have it on public record. 
There was no downside to me pushing the lawsuit all the way to court. I was right that the judge thought it was disgusting that the HOA took advantage of the owner, aka me, being deployed to take over the property and falsely claiming it was abandoned. While the HOA can take over abandoned property, there are many hoops to jump through that they ignored that if they didn't would have stopped them from taking it. HOA funds had to pay for the destruction of the parking lot and all money gained from it was going directly to me. The HOA board was also stripped of their titles and forced to step down. The HOA could have technically still stayed except for one small thing that pushed them over. Every single member of the community that bought a parking pass was now demanding a full refund and the HOA had to give it to them. That meant the money they got was being taken away from them twice. Once for me and then once to give back refunds. This caused the last of their money to be drained and they had to shut down. Only just this year have I started construction on a small house in that vacant lot for me to live in. At this point there's still no HOA in the area and nobody seems to be bothered by it. I was a little worried about backlash from the people not having a parking lot anymore, but I heard nothing from them. Maybe I just got lucky with an easygoing group of people or they knew the HOA was corrupt and horrible. So many people just get screwed over by the HOA and don't even know they can stop it. Hell, I wouldn't have known without my dad helping and getting a good lawyer. I think they try and prey on young landowners thinking they don't know anything and are an easy target. I know it might have worked on me and scares me to think how many HOAs have gotten away with crap like this before. And the next one is a petty revenge story. I am 28 years old and live in a town with a cost of living crisis. I moved back in with my parents since we have a good relationship, I buy all the groceries and pay the electric bill. My little sister, 16 however, was not happy. She was saying that I should be a man and move out again. A few weeks ago she started continuously calling me a freeloader and a parasitic leech. My parents are anti-tech, they are not part of a cult, they just avoid technology and prefer to live a simplistic life. The only modern tech they use is a laundry machine, a car, a flip phone and a TV. They don't however take away our gadgets if we paid for it ourselves. So when I turned 18 and was looking for my first job, I had to handwrite a resume since I didn't have a computer or a printer. It's impossible to get a job while still in school because of the poor job market in our town. Now my little sister was lucky, I bought her a smartphone with a data plan since she was a young child, yet she was continuously calling me all these names. Eventually though, my little sister constant name calling got on my nerves and I came up with an idea. As the smartphone is under an active installment plan, I simply repossessed the smartphone, now she is having the same childhood I had. Oh and by the way, she stopped with the name calling. Enjoy the Amish lifestyle little sister. And thankfully Ripe Stars we even have an update to the story and it reads like this. So it had been a while since I took back my smartphone which I'd been lending to my little sister because she kept calling me a parasitic leech for having to move back home due to the rising cost of living. She's had no access to the internet since as our parents are pretty anti-technology. I believe that justice should be fair, impartial and reasonable, reasonable being the keyword here. With that being said, I decided to give back the smartphone to my little sister as she stopped with the constant name calling. She was being a bit friendly and because she was sleeping all day ever since I took the phone. Life is very short and I don't want to hold grudges with anyone, especially my own sister. So I gently knocked on her door with a smartphone in my hand. Hi little sister, I greeted her through the closed door. F an idiot, my sister yelled. I replied, well I was gonna give you back the smartphone but it seems like you want to be left alone so I'll leave you be. Enjoy the day little sister. She then came out like a yelping dog begging for the phone back. I told her that my friend really needed a smartphone so I was thinking of giving it to him. She sighed and went back in her room. She is sleeping now. I think I'll let her buy her own phone this time. Hopefully she will mature in the coming years. She was a sweet child a couple of years ago and I hope that she'll be a sweet person in a couple more. And the next one is a malicious compliance story and it is absolutely perfect. So I drive for Uber in the Dallas area and I received a ride request. I picked up the gentleman and it was a good ride. About 5 minutes in the rider asked me what was on my rear view mirror. I told him it was my interior cam. He got mad and told me to turn it off because he did not like such surveillance. I reminded him that the Uber app would have said that there was video recording, there are also signs on the door. He could have declined booking the trip if there was a problem. It escalated when he yelled, you better turn that damn thing off or else. 
or else? I asked. Yes, was the reply. Turn it off or stop this trip. I verified with him his request and he said, yes, turn the damn thing off or end this trip. To which I said, fine, have it your way, I'll comply. At that, I exited the highway and pulled into a convenience store. He acted a bit stunned before shouting, What the hell are you doing? I calmly stated, You said either I stop recording or I end the trip. As I have no intention of stopping the recording, I'm letting you out here. That didn't go well for him as he started screaming and hurling vituperative abuse beginning with F, questioning my parentage and although correctly guessing my sexual orientation, he was rather rude about it. I calmly ended the trip as per his request that was the compliance. So here is the maliciousness which although I'm very capable of I rarely do. When ending the trip on the app I gave him a 1 star rating as we cannot give a 0. As he really was getting on my last nerve I added feeling unsafe and abusive rider. As he continued to rant I pointed to a police car that just pulled in and told him if you don't leave my car immediately then perhaps you might want to explain why not to that nice officer over there. After getting a few more cutting jabs and getting out, he tossed his open protein drink at my head, hitting the headrest and spilling all over the floorboard. It was that time that I got a text message from Uber support asking if I was alright. I said I was, they told me his account was suspended and asked if I could send the video clip to him. I said I would and also mentioned the mess. Uber support told me to just send them a picture and he would be charged a $75 cleaning fee which I got within an hour. So I did exactly what the rider wanted but due to his petulant behavior he got a cancelled Uber account and it cost him $75. If he would have just left I wouldn't have done a thing but play stupid games, win stupid prizes. And the next one is titled Police Malicious Compliance. In our mid-twenties, my husband and I purchased and moved into our rather modest first house with our infant daughter. It may be a big effort to meet and befriend our neighbors and all of them warned me to be careful of one particular person named Jane. This Jane had lived in the street for three years at this point and had earned herself the nickname Big Fat Jane as she was manipulating, intimidating and being thoroughly awful. Jane ran a daycare from her house but neighbors on both sides reported hearing her scream at the children and leave them unsupervised in the garden. It's important to note that Jane's partner is a police officer, the neighbors were scared of retaliation if they reported her or stood up to her. It seemed that Jane would use this to get away with her horrific behavior. Our house had a driveway with a dropped curb big enough for one car but we could fit both if you blocked in the first and only used the second car. Parking on the street was very limited and we had double yellow lines outside our house not allowed to stop and park there. During some essential roof work our driveway was taken up by scaffolding and a skip so we parked in the street and my husband parked outside BFJ's house. The next day when he went to his car, BFJ came running down her path shouting at him. She screamed about his anti-social parking, that his car would be towed and that he could expect it to be scratched up if he left it there any longer. My husband calmly explained it was a public road and she had no right to police the space. Her screeches at this point were loud enough that I and several neighbors heard and came to see the commotion. Her partner was perched at the door during all of this saying and doing nothing. When she saw me on the pavement with our daughter she pointed and screamed You will have this social on you if you don't have off, I will scratch you right up. At this point I told my husband to come back and we were calling the police. She responded Can't the police effin dare you. He is, pointing at her partner, a policeman, he will sort you out. You won't know what hit you. At this point my husband looked at her husband and said, is that right? And you're agreeing with what she has said? The partner nodded and said, you need to move or accept the consequences. You call the police, it won't get you anywhere. Funnily, when I then took out my phone and dialed the non-police emergency number on speakerphone and made a police report, both of them looked a lot less confident. BFJ stood there open-mouthed and then grabbed her partner and slammed the door. We have not heard from her since. Her partner was placed on suspension due to the allegation and further allegations from our neighbors. He then returned to an admin role. After our confrontation, BFJ was given a warning for a public order offense. However, due to a number of reports, her daycare closed and she is no longer able to mind children. Their house is up for sale. However, as she made a number of modifications without proper planning or works people, its price is significantly lower than they expected and they are in negative equity. All because of a parking space. And the next one is an am I the a-hole story. Background, my daughter Tia has a cognitive delay. Although she is 25 years old, her intellectual and emotional capacity are that of a 12 or 14 year old. 
I am her legal guardian. Tia and I visited our regular salon last month to get her hair cut. While shampooing her hair, the stylist, Aleandro, noticed that she had lies. Instead of telling her quietly, he caused a big scene that left Tia in tears. His reaction was so loud and exaggerated, it caused everyone in the salon to stare. He gasped audibly and took two steps back, throwing his hands in the air and tilting his hip and he shrieked, Oh Jesus, girl, you're crawling with Piochos. They probably went south, so you better get checked for labia lobsters. My daughter was dumbstruck. She didn't understand the words he was saying, but she sensed his tone. By the time I got to his booth from the waiting area, her chest was hitching and tears were streaming down her cheeks. I put a towel around Tia's head and guided her out of the chair. I told her we had to leave because her brother had locked himself out of the house. Aleandro and I locked eyes and I gave him a look of utter disdain. Once we were safely in the car, her sobbing had subsided. I told her that her brother had texted me that he found his key so we could get ice cream. We started talking about other things like her friend group that brightened her mood and she seemed to forget the incident. We then finished our ice cream and I told her we should get her hair cut while we were out. I said that Aleandro's shift had ended and that we needed to go to a different salon. Once there, I surreptitiously advised the stylist that she needed a lice treatment. By the time we got home, I was steaming mad. It haunted me all evening and into my nightmares. The next day, I searched the internet for the name of the salon CEO. I called his office and demanded to speak to him. He was not available though, but his assistant took my complaint and promised to pass it on. Fast forward a month later and I had heard nothing from the salon. It was time for my son to get a haircut, so I called to make an appointment with anyone but Alejandro. I asked for three different dates, but the stylist who answered the phone, Alicia, told me that they were booked. Her tone was curt, which made my spider senses tingle. I just came out and said it. Alicia, is something wrong? Her response floored me. She said, yes, something is wrong. You got Alejandro fired. You could have handled it with the store manager, but you didn't. Your family is not welcome here anymore. My jaw dropped and all I could manage was a timid, okay. So I hung up and began to reflect. Am I the a-hole for reporting Alejandro to the CEO? Am I a Karen? And here, ripe stars, let me know in the comments what you think about this one. I would say OP was definitely not the a-hole for getting this douchebag fired. However, in case she was aware that her daughter had lice, she might have been the a-hole for taking her to a hairstylist without mentioning that beforehand. But then again, I don't think we have enough info about that. Either way, the first comment said, not the a-hole for getting the stylist fired for making a horrendous comment. However, you are absolutely the a-hole for taking your daughter into another salon knowing she had had lies rather than treating it on your own. It violates health regulations in most of the United States for salons to knowingly serve someone with an active head lice infestation. Expecting salons to risk their license for your convenience is rude. If you're not in the US, it might be legal, but it's still gross. Comment number two, not the a-hole, lice happens. If it didn't, they would have gone extinct by now. Also, a hairstylist should know that their first reaction should be, okay, we gotta handle this first, not thinking about their client's genitals. And now let's move on to the next story. It's starts like this. About eight years ago, my boyfriend and I lived in what can only be described as ghetto flats. When we first moved in, it was just a bunch of old people and a few stoners and it was a pretty chill place to be. Over time, the same landlord started buying up all the flats within the complex and bringing in what can only be described as total dead crap tenants because he was using their rent money to basically cover up that he's a dealer. The complex was two sets of six flats facing each other with a big driveway up the center. Three flats on the top, three on top on each side. Once you enter that driveway, you are in another world. None of these guys had a job. They all sat around all day drinking, smoking and snorting something into their faces whilst hanging out on the communal couch in the driveway. They were always friends at first until they got past tipsy and into drunk territory and then they would start fighting. My boyfriend and I would get home from work to a daily white trash crap show. Things that happened, domestic violence couple, he would lock her out overnight, throw her stuff off the balcony and smash it on the ground. One day he retrieved her from another neighbor's flat by dragging her out by her hair and up the stairs into their apartment. I woke up to her crying on the communal couch one morning and led her into our flat for a coffee. He went nuts. A couple of hours later, whilst I was walking out the clothesline, he yelled out that anyone who lets her in will cop a beating. 
and he will kill their cat. I knew he was referring to me and I yelled back that if he touches my cat, I will cut his kids. I obviously wouldn't do that, but nobody ever spoke back to him and he didn't expect it. I think he knew that unlike his girlfriend, I would press charges if he hit me. He never tried to be tough to me ever again. My boyfriend and I moved out when we just couldn't handle it any longer, unsurprisingly it got worse. Here are things that happened after we left. We know because our friend remained there for years afterwards. SWAT team was called in about six times to deal with the fighting, drugs etc. Molotov cocktails were thrown through the window of the domestic violence couple. Turns out they were narcs and had dobbed in one of the other neighbors for dealing. A father moved in with his son and daughter, the son and daughter are banging. Cigarettes were always used as currency, people borrowed each other's washing machines because only like two out of three people owned one. One flat caught fire, killing the guy in there and his dog. The landlord never did any repair work, my friend could not run his TV, his oven and a fan because it would short out. One neighbor owned two big dogs, the dogs tore another neighbor's pet cat in half in front of her children. Molotov cocktails, SWAT teams, fire, death, murder dogs. Crazy place. And with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you cannot get enough of my content please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.